I felt something in that prayer. The thing is that sometimes we realize, we don't realize that um, God does things when we are in prayer that we cannot do for ourselves. You might want to write that down. <laughs> Amen. God does things for us when we are in prayer that we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. God does things for us when we are in prayer that we cannot do for ourselves. And I was watching this video just yesterday about my latest video that I put on YouTube and I was talking about grace. And in that video, I realized that there was a really strong stronghold against teaching on grace. Because I felt like I was being, I was fighting. And from that day forward, I, I believe I grew. I believe that I got discernment. And I, and I feel like all these subjects that God has been showing us are the, are the strongholds we need to knock down. The church needs to know about real grace. So those of you that are online, remember, go online, YouTube, and you go on YouTube and you put the word of the Lord with Pastor Maldonado. Those tapes will come up. Because the church needs to learn about real grace. False grace is that you can do whatever you want and still be saved. True grace is you can do everything that God told you to do. Be righteous, live holy. Mm -hmm. All those things. That's true grace. Amen. So the enemy fights really hard against that. The enemy is going to fight against what we're doing right now. Teaching about knowing about God's love. You know, love is a two-way street. So eventually we're going to, it's, it's also included us loving Him. It's a big, big stronghold against everything that God has been teaching us here in this class. Discipleship, that's a stronghold. I mean, big time stronghold where you realize Hey, I'm not just a Christian. I, I am actually called to be a disciple, not a Christian. I'm, not, I'm called to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Because if I think about just being a Christian, I'm talking about just Sundays and Wednesdays. It's kind of a superficial thing. But if I think about disciple, I think about, man, as soon as I wake up, <laughs> and I'm, I'm walking with God. Amen. See? So there's a stronghold, amen. Hallelujah. There's a stronghold against us learning about these things that are so important. Amen? And so we need to realize, again, I taught earlier that a stronghold is an area that the enemy has taken from us that we need to take back. And the reason why you feel a stronghold is because that's where the enemy, just like in a strategic army, uh, whatever strategy, right? They would put most of their army and all their troops or tanks, whatever, to protect that area. That's the same way the enemy does when we hit those areas because he doesn't want us to take that back. Because if we could take those things back, he ends up losing. He's going to lose. He's already going to lose, but he ends up losing more territory. That's why it's so important that we realize that that's what's happening when we hit those strongholds. Okay? And that's where we have to push. But what we're talking about yesterday, we're going to pick up their today, but we talked about how God in His great mercy and His love for His church, He is bringing to our mind and to our heart and to our remembrance what is the essential or the most essential things so that the church can be ready. And those are the strongholds. Okay? So that the church can be ready. Amen. And uh, we talked about love for God. How being in love with God needs to be at the core of our service or our discipleship to God. Love for God needs to be at the core, amen, of our service or our discipleship to God. And then we left off last yesterday with the, the, the statement I really felt from God as I was preparing for this, the commandment that was from the beginning. The commandment that was from the beginning. And we went to 1 John chapter 2. We talked about that. We're going to go ahead and go back there and see what we missed on there. 1 John chapter 2. 
We talked about how James, uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty deep book. And, but first John, John is the disciple that was in love with God. Amen. John was the disciple that felt so comfortable in the presence of God that what, what would he do? And him, I'm glad my son Stefan's here because he's the only one in, in my kids that will come over and just lean on my shoulder. He'll just... And, and, that's, and, that's, and that's what John would do for Jesus. He just, self, he just felt so comfortable about Jesus, he would go over there and lean on his chest. Right? And so we see here the book of John, or the first John actually, it's the, right before the book of Revelations. Amen, chapter 2. We're going to read over the stuff we already read because we reread it yesterday. But it says, My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin... Chapter 2. Yeah, that, we, that you sin not. And if, you, if any man sin, we talked about all those things yesterday. You have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation of our sins. And we're going to go down to... Verse 4, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandment, is, not, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. So you can't really love God and not have God's word. It's just impossible. That's how you perfect God's love, with God's word. Alright, you might want to write that down. That's how you perfect God's love, with God's word. When you worship God in spirit and what? Truth. Truth. Spirit is the small s, which means your spirit. It means you better get busy. Using what? God's truth. That's how you worship God. Right? So, that is how you perfect the love, the love with God. It's with His Word. Hereby know we that we are in Him. That's how you know. Because why? You're conforming to God's Word. Six, he that saith he abideth in him out of himself also walk even as he we walk. And we talked about wow that what a standard. Right? What a standard that is. Walk like he walked? Oh my goodness. Right? Hallelujah. And seven, brethren, I write I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. There it is. The commandment that was from the beginning. Right? And we talked yesterday about that really even talks all the way to Genesis when God all really, all really wanted. The only thing he really wanted from Adam was for him to love him back and had that beautiful relationship. Amen? And it says, which you have from the beginning, the old, the old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. In other words, he's basically saying, I am not changing nothing. It's the same thing I wanted from you from the beginning. Right? Mm -hmm. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past. We're going to go ahead and go past all that because we read it already. And also we see here in, in some of these scriptures how you have an overcoming life with loving God. You have an overcoming life. Verse 12, I write unto you, my little children, because your sins are forgiven for my name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him uh, that is from the beginning. Amen. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. And I write unto you, you little children, because you have known the Father. Again, that word knows, known, right? What did Jesus tell the disciples? Say, I didn't know you. What did he tell his disciples that, that were casting out demons and they thought they were already good? And Jesus says, I don't know you. Right? It talks about that intimate relationship. It's an overcoming relationship that you love God that's how you overcome the world I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one see that's how you overcome that's how you you defeat the enemy amen love not the world an overcoming 
uh, overcoming life uh, of loving God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Right? Don't love them. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, right? That's what your flesh always wants. Mm -hmm. And the lust of the eyes, which your eyes always never seem to be satisfied, right? Yes. You buy a new car, you see the next, a year later, it looks like an old car, you want the new model. <laughs> right? You're never satisfied. The pride of life, right? You always feel like you got to be number one. Right? I, 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 the I, I, I will kill you. You won't make it. He resists the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. Amen? Is not, it says, not of the Father, but is of the world. Those things are of the world. The lust, that hard, strong desire to satisfy what your flesh wants. That strong desire, that driving desire to satisfy what your eyes want. That strong desire, that strong that you that to satisfy, to be, keep up with everybody else. Or to be better than them. Forget keeping up with them, be better than them. <laughs> right? And the world passes away. All that stuff is going to go away. And you guys know it, right? Amen. Everything gets old. And you're like, man, I don't think I like that anymore. You used to love it. You lusted after it. Now you're ready to junk it. <laughs> right? And the world passes away. And the lust thereof, or that desire. Amen. That strong desire. But he that doeth the will, but he that doeth the will of God addeth, abideth forever. You're not going nowhere. That person's not going nowhere. Little children, it, and I love the way he keeps calling us little children, right? That's what he's trying to get to. He's trying to get that person, that innocence, he's trying, innocence inside of you, that, 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 that inner man inside of you. That's what he's trying to reach. Amen? Little children, it is, the, it is the last time. He's talking about the end times. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it's the last time. Now we start getting into another subject, so we're going to leave it there. But he's making sure that you're in love with him. Why? Because it's the last days. Right? And it's the last days then. It's the last, you can be sure it's the last days now. We're in the end of the end. Praise God. And so, we see First John, amen, again, that walking with God, that overcoming lifestyle, amen, being in love with God. And I want to take you guys to, again, we're talking about the commandment that was from the beginning. The commandment that was from the beginning. I want to take you to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 this chapter keeps coming back obviously we're, we're people we use it a lot because we believe in the oneness of God but when we're talking about the oneness of God I say when we're talking about the oneness of God it is because he wants us to know that there's only one person you should love yeah. he's making sure that you realize there is no other God but him and you ought to go ahead and put all your affection on Him and all your trust in Him. He's trying to save you. He's trying to help us out. Somebody, somebody say amen. amen. He's trying to help us out with not being confused, not being people of two opinions. Well, I don't know if that, that's God or this God. No, there's only one God. And so Deuteronomy 6.4 is called the Shema. And what it's saying is to take heed, O Israel. It says here, O Israel, is take heed, which means it's not a matter. Understand this. That's, as a matter of fact, I'll just, I believe it's God's spirit. Understand this. It's not about just hearing Him. Not about just hearing God's word. You know, and there's certain things that are more important than others. Right? Even Jesus says that later. He says, you know what? You guys make sure you tithe of everything, but you're forgetting the most important things. 
There are certain level things that are most important. And one of them is knowing that there is only one God. Amen. And that that's who you ought to set all your affection and on a trust on Him. Amen. So make sure, Israel, that you hear and pay attention. That's what He's saying. So, and that's called the Shema, amen, that the, the uh, Jewish, a uh, real uh, uh, Jewish person that really follows his, his, uh, his religion, of Jew, uh, Jewish religion, amen. They say that every day and they'll, they'll say it with the last breath. And that's the Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, amen. And, and that's what he's talking about there. He said, listen. But we have to realize that it doesn't end there. He goes on and says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. That's where it's at. All thy heart. That's the beginning, the, the first commandment in the beginning for the first place. When it's all started. This is not a New Testament thing. That's what he's talking about in First John. Okay? And he, he said... Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all your soul. Man, that's your, who you are. That's who you are. That's that person in you that likes hot dogs, likes hamburgers, likes burritos, likes enchiladas. And we're always talking about enchiladas, right? Always, that's your soul. I mean, you know, have you ever like ate something you felt good or, right? You feel, right? That's your soul. That's who you are. Make sure you put your affection and you like Jesus. You like God. You love Him. Amen? And with all your might, there's, there's the action part. There's the action. Right? You got to put something in it. You got to obey. You got to do it. With all your might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Again, there's the heart. The heart. It's all about the heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Um, you know, for that first man, you know, you got to tell your kids. You, this whole thing's about just loving God. Don't get all caught up in the religious stuff, man. Don't get caught up in the churchy stuff. Teach your children diligently, amen, unto thy children, and shalt talk up. Of them about what about what he's telling us when you sit in your own house or when you walk take it with you take it out though take it out of these four walls by the way yeah he, God's God's message hasn't changed the Great Commission it's always been the Great Commission the first the first commandment always been the first commandment and, and when you you lie down Right? Discipleship. This is discipleship if I ever had heard it right there. That verse. All of those things. It's when you wake up and when you go to sleep. <laughs> right? Amen. And when you rise up and bind them for a sign upon your, your hand. Amen? Praise God. Verse 10. And also verse 9. Thou shalt write it upon the post of the, your house and of thy gates. Doesn't it sound like maybe something that's pretty important, right? <laughs> God's making sure you realize, right? This is what's important. Amen? In verse 11, verse 10, And it shall be when the Lord... And so when we start to read this, ver this verse 10 through 13, we see that the real blessings flow from a real relationship with God. You have these people saying, God wants to bless you. Well, how do you know God wants to bless you if you're not even living for God? How about telling him God wants to save you? How about telling him God wants to make sure you got He's got your whole heart first before you try to bless them? Hello? That's really God's word. The real blessing is for you to be living for God and loving God. Then the blessings come. See? And so it says, and, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee unto the land. See, that's what it means, is that when you just love God, it happens. The promised land would happen if they just would have loved God. <laughs> right? Amen. And, and 
to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou builtest not. So if we're all sweating and pushing and working real hard, you're probably not in God's grace. You're probably not where you need to be. Relax. Relax. Take a deep breath, everybody. Come on here, brother. Take a deep breath. And you know what? Just make sure that you love God. Hello? This is God's Word. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And so it says, you didn't even build it. We're over here so worried about, oh, we got to do this, we got to do that. No, make sure you just are loving God and serving God, obeying God. Mm, that's right. Prayer, word, and action. See, this sounds like New Testament, right? It's not. It's Old Testament. It's Deuteronomy. Yes, it is. All Jesus did was tell you what was already written when he came. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise and the houses Lord. full of good things. And we're all worried about, man, I got to do, I want this, I want that. Why don't you just love God? Why don't you just serve God? Mm. Yeah. Right? And houses full of good things, which, what? You feel, feel this not. Again, wasn't some big old effort that you did. <laughs> Hello? Amen. Amen. And wells did, which you didn't dig. Not vineyards and olive trees, which you plantest not when, when you shall have eaten and be full. Amen. Praise God. So we're going we're gonna to read that. Amen. So again, those are the true blessings. And it says, verse 12, right? Be aware, right? Because you get comfortable. You get all blessed and you're good. And you're, man, you forget about the rest of the people. You forget about, you get too comfortable. Right? Verse 12. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee. Again, you better keep being in love with God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. This is not anything other but being in love with God. Don't forget to keep being in love with God. Amen. Then beware, let's not forget the Lord, which what? He did all that stuff for you. Who did all this stuff for you? God is a jealous God. Hallelujah. How would you like it? I mean, come on. How would you like it? I mean, I don't even want to imagine it. Okay, you have this girlfriend, you're young, and you start buying her a bunch of gifts, and you buy her a car, you buy, and then she uses the car and goes pick up some other guy. No, don't want to imagine. Wouldn't that kill you? <laughs> don't want to imagine. <laughs> Wouldn't that, though, seriously? Come on. Yeah. Wouldn't you hate that? Jesus. Well, come on, someone. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Forget, don't forget the Lord that brought thee out of the land of Egypt from what? The house of bondage. Jesus won't leave us nor forsake us. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. You shall not go after any other gods, the gods of the people which are around about you. People around us got gods, man. You guys know that? You're like, well, wait a minute. We don't. Live in the Old Testament. Well, I haven't seen no image. Well, you do see them, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, their God is their house. Their God is their car. Their God is their yeah. sport. Their God is their tequila. Their God is their beer. The God is their drug. The God is women. The God is men. The God is. I mean, they got gods. Idol worship. Make sure you don't start following after their gods. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. For verse 15, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. He's, in, he's, in, he's right here around us, man. He's watching us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. And it says that you shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. That's verse 16. Amen. And the, the thing about that is that we cannot love. We'll put it this way. God is a 
Love is a two-way street. Love is a two-way street. That's the one thing that we have to realize. Amen. And without real love for God, we will mess up. Without real love for God, you will not make it. Amen. Can we just put it that way? Yes. yes. Without real love for God, you are not going to make it. Amen. So let, we'll see what they're talking about there. Verse Exodus 17. Remember, what, what did the scripture say um, in 1 John? The, first, the, the, the commandment that was from the beginning. Exodus 17, verse 1. Right? And you know what? God knows us. Amen? It says, verse 17, verse 1, And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according, according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched and refed them. There was no water for the people to drink. Right? When you love God, amen, when you love God, you trust God. When you love God, you believe in God. Amen. Amen. Right? Yes. And verse 2, Wherefore the people did what? Chide with Moses. And said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? See, there it is. There's that word tempt. Amen. We're going to see that in a little bit. We're going we're gonna to develop that in a little bit more. In verse, we're going to go to verse 3. And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses, and said, Wherefore is, that, is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us? Okay. Remember that all these things they're saying, all these things they're saying, they're not really against Moses. They're against God. So you can imagine Moses saying, man, if you just keep it up, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> but it wasn't really Moses. It was God that they're really bothering, they're, they're tempting. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. We don't realize sometimes when we begin to complain and complain and complain. You know, you just have to love God, trust God. Mm -hmm. yeah. trust, trust, trust. What happened? Amen. And the people thirsted for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore hath thou brought us up out of Egypt and to kill us? That's pretty bad, right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And our children and our cattle with thirst. Kill us and our animals. Right? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. Mm. Right? And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee the elders of Israel and thy rod with thee that thou smotest the river. Take in thy hand and go. And behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. And thou shalt smite the rock and there shall come water out of it. And the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders. And he called this name of the place Massa and Meribah. Because the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Wow. Well, what is that saying, man? Why don't God do what I want? Mm -hmm. How many believers in so-called Christianity believe that way? A lot. There's a lot more than you realize. <laughs> yeah. Why don't God just do what I want? I was one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, and they get mad when it doesn't happen. Yeah. And they don't believe when it don't happen. Well, isn't God amongst us? Yeah, He's amongst us. He don't want to do what you want. He's right here. He's not interested in doing anything you're asking. It's not about me. 
Really? Why? Because you don't love God. You don't trust God. You don't. You, I, here's the thing. We're gonna. I'm gonna read you what what I wrote here. And I said we will always find ourselves fighting against God, not Moses. Remember that. You're not fighting against flesh and blood, right? In the spirit, against bad spirits. But you're also not fighting against Pastor Delgado, Pastor Maldonado, or any of the elders. It's really God because it's told you guys before, you got to have your own relationship with God. you got to right. love God. Amen. You're serving Him. Amen. And so, that what I wrote down here, if you don't really love God, you are, al you are always going to be loving something. Mm -hmm. So that means your heart is somewhere else. Ouch. That's what it means, right? Yeah. You're always... You're always going to love something. It might be a drug. It might be this. It might be that. It might just be your life. It might be, it could be anything. Amen? You're always going to love something other than Him. Obviously, you don't love Him if you don't love God. But you love something. Right? And I wrote down, they didn't love God or know Him nor trust Him. you got to believe that they did believe in Him because they saw all His wonders, and yet... Think about that. Wow. you got to believe that they did believe in Him. Mm -hmm. Remember those people that said, God, did we do miracles and signs and wonders? you know? you got to believe that they did believe in Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Right? Same, well, that's New Testament. This is Old Testament. you got to believe. This, you really got to believe. Mm -hmm. I mean, He... The Lord went before them at, in the night with a pillar of fire in case they, He needed them to keep walking in the night. And in the daytime, He went before them with a pillar of, of cloud. So in case it got too hot, He'd keep them cool. They, they had their own, old, their own air conditioner. Right? Which really more just the fact that He was guiding them. Yeah. So exactly. mm -hmm. you, they had to believe in Him. Yeah. So that tells us that you could believe in Him and not love Him. That's right. That's right. No relationship. There's belief, but no relationship. Where's the relationship? And at? you got to really dig deep into that and kind of Jesus. think, man, that better not be me, Jesus. man, because I got to... You know what I mean? So that's the thing, you know, that we must love God. They didn't know Him. They didn't trust Him. And they didn't love him. I want you to write that down. And if you want to go online on Facebook, I have a page on there. It's called the Word of the Lord Facebook page. You will find these notes on there. They didn't know him. They didn't trust him. Or they didn't also love him. They didn't know him. They didn't trust him. And they didn't love him. When, you, when it really comes down to it, this is some serious, serious business. And so we want to look at, we're going to go to Matthew 6. Remember the, the commandment that was from the beginning. It's a commandment that when you break, it don't matter, you're in big trouble. I don't care what other commandments you're keeping. <laughs> if you're not keeping that one, you're in big trouble. Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 24. Amen. And what does this say? No man can serve two masters. Wow. It's just impossible. We're talking about all the same stuff, right? And I told you before... When Jesus was here, all he was really doing is telling you what already happened, stuff that's already happening, just happening yeah. since the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's the commandment that was from the beginning. Right? And when you read the Old Testament, it tells you to love your master. Wow. Even in the New Testament, you know, it tells you. I mean, people get mad and say, see, Jesus was for slavery. No, he wasn't. He, just, he was just saying, if you're, that's where you're stuck and there's no way out, then you better just live for God. That's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. 
Ha shataya. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters for either, it's either one or the other. You may not realize that there's people that hate Jesus and they don't even know it. <laughs> that one right there. <laughs> there's people that hate Jesus and they don't even know it. Why? Because they're so in love with something else. Like it's just like the opposite. They don't know it. And, and so they feel this like, they kind of like a bore Jesus. So like they really, you talk to them about, hey, let's get down to the Bible. So, well, I got this, I got that, I got that, I got this. Let's go to prayer. Well, I got this, I got that, I got this. Well, let's do it. Well, I got this, I got that, I got this. All is vanity. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not of God. <laughs> so... Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters for either. He will hate the one and love the other. See? I mean, even Jesus is using that word. Mm -hmm. He didn't say he will just not like the one and he's really going like, to like love the other one. He says hate. He says hate, yeah. hate. That's deep. That's real. Or else, or else he will hold to one, Right? You got to let go of that. That's why really to get saved, you got to let go of that stuff, right? Right. Yeah. Right, don't you? Yeah. I remember before, before I got saved, one of the things that I said, like maybe weeks before I got saved, I love this stuff. And you know what I was doing? I was smoking a big joint. Mm -hmm. I said, I love this stuff. Yeah, Jesus, out of his great mercy, Granted me repentance. Amen. Come on. Amen. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something. And this just came to me. And I forgot who it was I told it to. Somebody in this class. I don't know if they're here today. But I told them, you know, for years, I mean years, I would have a dream. It was more like a nightmare in a way that I was getting high. Years after living for God, man. Years. I don't have them anymore, thank God. But I actually would wake up and think I had messed up and got high. I can relate to that because sometimes I still have dreams like that. Of me getting high on heroin. Right. And it, after, it took that. years and years. And then all of a sudden I don't have that dream no more. But I would wake up feeling dirty. Mm -hmm. I would wake up thinking, man, did I do that? Or did, yeah, where's, where's my yeah. stash at? You don't feel right. You don't feel right. I'm serious. Yeah. I know. So this is real stuff. Yes, it is. Spiritual. And so he says, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. That's when all of a sudden you start loving Jesus. Come on. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. That's when you start loving Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Talking about money, but really it's, it's a principle. Mm -hmm. Therefore, and this is the, again, remember what I told you about Jesus. He's just teaching. I mean, he's a teacher. He's a teacher of teachers. And he says... Amen. The next verse. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. What does that mean? When you love God, you trust God. Yes. You know God. You trust God. You love God. Hallelujah. You follow God. Hallelujah. And it says, therefore say, take no thought to your life that, that you, what you shall eat. Why? That was, that was what they were blowing at, right? In Masa, right? And the, the, that's what they, my, there's nothing to eat. There's nothing to drink. Man, don't God care about us? Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Say, take no thought, amen, what yeah. you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet your body, what you shall put on, or is not life more than meat and body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are they not much better than, are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? In other words, relax, believe, know him, trust him, love him. Amen? Amen. No matter what you're going through. Yes, that's right. 
And why take chapter 6? Remember, the commandment that was from the beginning. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we always thought Deuteronomy was all the only thing there was the Shema, and that's it. <laughs> Amen? Deuteronomy 6, verse 17. Amen. Hallelujah. And I put down here in my notes, love is power and it's covering. It's a covering and it is our testimony. Deuteronomy 6, 17, it says, You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which, you have com which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the, the good land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. Again, there's that power to possess the land. Power in the territory wherever God puts you. Yes. yes. Amen. yes. You're under his covering. Yes. That's your testimony. Yes. Your testimony is what? I don't know how you make it, man. How you do it. To cast out all the enemies from before thee. That's what God wants to do. It's not about going about doing what you want, man. It's about casting out all those strongholds and getting getting people free. Amen. And taking care to occupy till he comes. That's right. Amen. To cast out all thine enemies from before thee as the Lord hath spoken. And when thy son asketh thee, and, and again, there's our testimony. Right? And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What meaneth the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then, then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were in Pharaoh's bond. What are you talking about? God loved us. What happened? Well, God was merciful to us. God saved us. God, God, God. Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen. We were captive in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt and upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. Know him, trust him, and love him. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our, for our, for our good always, right? It's for our own good. You think, you're, you think you're giving God something? Not really. He's giving you. <laughs> He's giving you. Amen. That he might preserve us alive. As it is this day. Again, there's that covering. And it shall be our righteousness. There it is. There's your righteousness. Just follow God. Know Him. Trust Him. And love Him. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as He has commanded us. Amen. 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 Praise God. The commandment that was from the beginning. Remember, it's all about you first have to love God or else you're not going to be able to obey any of those commandments. Amen. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and go into a, a scripture so we can finish with. And the thought is this thought. God could have chose anyone. This is a thought. You could write this down and, and, or if you already have the note. They said, God could have chose anyone. But he chose me. <clears throat> Real love comes from God. S because he shows us. He could have chose anyone, yet he chose you. Yes. Amen. Right? Amen. He's teaching us something in that. Amen? Psalms 24. Let's go to Psalms 24. 
We're going to finish with that scripture. Psalms 24. And we're going to read that. Hey, what does that say, that verse? Somebody want to read that out loud? Verse, Just verse 1. I'll read it. Read it out loud, brother. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it, the world and they that live in it. Amen. So what does that tell us? That everything is God's. He could have chose to do, he could choose to do whatever he wants. So we ought to watch and see what he does. You know, in Genesis 1-1, um, God created the heavens and the earth and everything. Right. Yeah. So just think about it. Everything's his. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> Every He could do whatever he wants. Right. Yes. My body is you. Why did he choose Hallelujah. to do it the way he wants to do it? Why did he choose you? Amen. I think when you choose something, it makes it special. Mm -hmm. I think that that's why God gave us our own will, right? You could choose God or not choose God when He comes to you. When He calls you, you could say, No, God, I'm too busy. Now, I, I, honestly, God, I like you. <laughs> that's bad. I mean, it is, right? I like you, but I mean, I'm kind of busy. I'm really caught up in my, in my, in my education. I'm really caught up in my career. Putting work before God. It's an idol. I'm really caught up in my other gods over here. What you're really saying is, I already got another God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a distraction. <clears throat> but the whole point is that you can choose, and you were made in God's image. He gave you, not the angels. The angels can't choose to do whatever they want. They got to do what God says. You don't. So when you choose to go ahead and take the call that God calls you, it makes it special. Yes, it does. We're going to leave it there, but I want you to make sure that you're back tomorrow because we're going to take it from there. And the question is, hey amen, God could, or the thought, God could have chosen anyone. Because remember, this is about knowing God. This is about loving God. This is about trusting God. This is about knowing and learning about God so that you, your love for Him will grow even more. Your understanding of Him will grow even more. If that happens to you, man, it's going to be great because that's what needs to happen. Because then you will be able to love Him back more. Yes. Reason why people can't love God more is because they don't know God. Mm -hmm. That's why they only like Him a little bit, mm -hmm. or they like Him a lot. Mm. But once you get to know maybe him, they love Him a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if there's such thing really in God's <laughs> economy. He doesn't like lukewarmness. <laughs> it's just not good enough. Right yeah. The right whole up. thing is that God made it made it possible for you to be in love with Him. And really, he doesn't really accept another standard. Standard, That's the thing. Yeah. Why should he? Right? Because one of these days, we're going we're gonna to spend eternal life with him. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just praise the Lord right there where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we lift you up. 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 We thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you. Amen. We thank you for being with us today. All of you that are online with us. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Continue to follow as many or all of the studies that you can because I really believe that God is building us up and strengthening us. Amen. For our walk with Him. Amen. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him.